Welcome to Utah State University's Vertebrate Paleontology course. My name is Benjamin Berger, and in this lecture, I will review the various early anapsid reptiles from the Pennsylvanian and Permian periods. The anapsid condition is where the skull lacks any temporal fenestra or opening. Most of these fossil anapsid reptiles follow that rule where the orbit or the eye socket is the only large opening on the side of the skull. Although some lighten their skulls with gaps in the ventral edge of the skull. Now as defined, the anapsid group is a paraphyletic grouping of early reptiles, since it does not include the descendants such as synapsids and diapsid reptiles. Now we can see the lack of a temporal fenestra in the two oldest of the amniote reptiles from the Pennsylvanian of Nova Scotia, the fossils Hyonomius and Paleothryus. Each lack any openings in the side of the skull near the squamosal bones and feature a primitive reptile skeleton. The next group of anapsid reptiles are the closely related Capyrinidae family, a group of primarily Permian reptiles that arose during the latest Pennsylvanian, but quickly diversified to become widespread with a nearly global distribution during the Permian. The first capyrinids were found in Texas, but specimens have been found in China, Africa, and across Europe as well. They feature well-ossified skulls that lack any openings for the jaw muscles, indicating that they had weak temporal and cheek muscles for closing the jaws. The teeth are unusual in that they form rows that allowed for crushing and grinding as well as puncturing. These specialized tooth rows allowed them to eat both insects and plant matter with an omnivore diet that likely led to their success. The jaws were operated by large pterygoid muscles on the inside of the skull. Capyrinids likely moved like modern lizards, but retained a primitive axial skeleton with broad shoulder and pelvic bones. The next group of anapsid reptiles are the parareptilia, which is a monophyletic clade of anapsid-like reptiles that are believed to be more distantly related to modern reptiles. The parareptilia is a a hodgepodge of early reptiles that lived during the Permian period between 300 and 250 million years ago, with many going extinct at the Permian-Triassic boundary. The first parareptilia group are the Mesosauridae, a group known from the early Permian of South America and South Africa, or Gondwana land. Now you might recognize these nearshore aquatic reptiles from introductory geology uh, textbooks as they're often cited as evidence for plate tectonics and the formation of Gondwana land since the fossil record is confined to South America and to South Africa. What is amazing about the mesosaurs are their narrow needle-like teeth that are believed to have been used to filter crustaceans and fish in the shallow marine environment. Their skulls are over a meter long with fossil evidence that these animals gave live birth and hence were able to remain in the water for most of their lifespan. Hence, mesosaurs are the first reptiles that ventured back into an aquatic lifestyle during the Permian period. The next group are the Millerettidae, a group of tiny early reptiles from the Permian of South Africa. They include the tiny lizard-like reptile Brumia. Now the Millerettidae, although considered anapsids, have an open temporal fenestra on the ventral side of the skull which lacks a lower bar. Now this open temporal fenestra likely served as an attachment points for jaw muscles on the 
outside edge of the skull, allowing them a more stronger bite. The next group are another small lizard-like family, the Permian reptiles called the Boliosauridae. It includes a very nimble looking fossil called Ediobamius, which is regarded as the first bipedal tetrapod or a swift running uh, reptile that was able to move onto its hind legs, running like some really fast lizards do today. Now the high limbs are elongated compared to the front limbs. The Boliosauridae are unique in having a skull with heterodont teeth, or teeth with cusp basins that could be used for grinding and chewing food. The skull also features a unique opening in the side of the skull that differs from most other reptile conditions, in that the quadrato jugal forms a lower bar to an opening while considered an anapsid reptile, this unique opening characterizes some of the more advanced parareptilians during the Permian. The Boliosauridae Balibi from Russia features a very large pineal opening at the top of the skull. The Procolophidae are the only group of parareptiles to survive the end Permian extinction and stay rather diverse in South America during the early Triassic and are also found in the Triassic of, of South Africa. They exhibit peg-like teeth and were primarily herbivores. The skulls were triangular shaped with large orbits when viewed from above. Now they have a sprawling stance and are believed to be semi-fossorial, digging burrows underground from which their remains have been found in South Africa. The next group are the very large Parasauridae, known primarily from Russia, but found throughout Asia, South America, South Africa. These large parareptiles grew to over two to three meters in length and had well-ossified bony skulls. Their grotesque bodies were supported by primitive shoulders and pelvic girdles, making them tower over other reptiles living during the Permian. They are herbivores with peg-like teeth that were useful in cropping vegetation with large bodies to facilitate a lengthy digestive tract to break down cellulose. These anapsid reptiles are much more complex and diverse than most textbooks make them out to be. And the skull diversity demonstrates several groups that open up the sides of the skull. So often they are not strictly anapsid reptiles, but a unique paraphyletic group of reptiles which demonstrate an early diversity of forms during the Permian period. Thus, in recognizing this diverse group, we can't necessarily use a single character, such as the absence of the temporal fenestra, to categorize all of the members. In the next video, we'll look at the first true diapsid reptiles that lived during the Permian period, the first group of true reptiles that originated. All right, be sure to summarize the diversity of early anapsid reptiles, including the Capyrhinidae and the Parareptilia clade of early Permian reptiles. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to learn more about Utah State University's geology program, check out the website geology.usu.edu or my own website at benjamin slash burger.org. Links are found in the description below.